is the Cam Baker Show. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm Kev Baker, and that's right, you guessed it. It is time for the Kev Baker Show right here on the network you love Truth Frequency Radio, and you can find us at tfrlive.com. Now, if you still use the old domain name, don't panic. You will be redirected to the new home of TFR, where you can find this show and a whole host of others that I'm sure you need to protect you as we move into this crazy future. Now, tonight, we have got one of the biggest shows lined up for your pleasure out there. I want you to get a pen, a bit of paper, because when we start with tonight's two guests, yes, that's right, two guests, not one, I am sure there's going to be a plethora of notes that you need to take to remind yourself of all the information we cover tonight. But before we get there, let me bring in the co-host, Mr. Johnny Whistles. How are you doing, man? Doing fine, Kev. Thanks very much. Yeah, looking forward to this. Um, you were telling people to get a pen and paper. Kev, I'm getting a bowl to catch whatever's coming out my ears because this is going to be a fantastic show tonight with the topics. It really is. And I did say maybe a couple of weeks ago that myself and Johnny were determined to raise the bar right here on truthfrequencyradio.com or tfrlive.com on the Kev Baker Show, right? And we've got Anthony Patch. He joins us twice a week now, and that in itself gave us a big boost. But there is so much to look forward to next month right here on KBS. And we kick it all off on the 1st of August with a new special guest coming to the show. Some of you may have heard of this person before, David Sereda is going to be making his KBS debut. We're going to be getting into a whole host of topics that covers all of the woo. And then on the 17th of August, it doesn't end there, Max Egan will be appearing live on the Kev Baker Show for all of your pleasure. Some good, hard truth that night. And it still isn't the guest that I'm lining up for the month after that. All to look forward to, Johnny, right? Kev, it's big stuff that we're going to get and some of the biggest names, Kev, are coming to KBS. That's what I, I absolutely love about it because, as you know, Kev, the people out there listen. They're yeah. actually listening to this show. Absolutely, and that is why we're able to attract such a high calibre of guest. And tonight, co-host, stroke guest, Mr Anthony Patch is joining us. Now, Anthony, you can find his work over at anthonypatch.com. And, Tony, tonight you're going to be more of a kind of co-host slash guest. Are you looking forward to this, dude? You're giving me an inferiority complex, you know. I know. It's your ego. It needed deflating, Tony. So I'm going to give you a seat beside us mere commoners, Whistles and myself. And tonight you can ride shotgun with us, dude. Well, I appreciate you just letting me be here. This is going to be a very specific technical show, and I really look forward to it. And this is a show that I've had in my imagination ever since we started doing a series of shows with the equally brilliant Dr. Eric Karlstrom. Now, Dr. Karlstrom has come on here a number of times, and I've been left almost hitting my head off the table wishing I had Anthony with me because we're trying to paint a picture here. And the true quantum entanglements that happen on TFR, the guests that come along independently of one another, they seem to possess puzzle pieces that fit together. So instead of me relaying the highlights to Tony tonight, I've brought him in here and he can join in as we go along. And of course, tonight's special guest is Dr. Eric Karlstrom, Emeritus of Professor, sorry, Professor of Geography, California State University, recently completed 30-year teaching career, he taught physical and environmental geography courses, as well as courses cross-listed with the geology department and an honours course. Now, throughout his career, Dr. Karlstrom has continued his research programme in soils and geomorphology as a means of reconstructing quaternary paleoclimates. He's also the author or co-author of many earth science publications and he's the man behind 
the website called Ga- gangstalkingmindcontrolcults.com. He's got another couple of websites I'll get him to reel off. But, Doc, welcome back to the show, sir. Thank you, Kev. It's always great to join you and uh, Johnny. And tonight, it's an extra uh, special privilege to join Anthony Patch as well. So I'm looking forward to this. And we have uh, narrowed in on a topic that uh, over a series of interviews, and, and the topic is uh, gang stalking, which uh, I'm, I'm very uh, happy to be able to continue uh, exploring because uh, TIs around the world have never sent a letter, you know, that, uh, okay, now you are a targeted individual, you've been placed on the terrorism watch list, and uh, you're now going to be a non-consensual experimentee for the Department of Defense. Um, people, TIs, in fact, uh, so this, uh, this is great to be able to share the information that, as I discover it, with uh, people who are also TIs. I get a lot of... Um, uh, emails and letters and even phone calls from TIs now that uh, have been kind of uh, getting a little more exposure uh, through your show and others. And uh, so, you know, uh, <laughs> I, I get a better sense of what's going on through these communiques. And uh, one said, uh, well, you keep talking about the problem. How about giving us some solutions? And uh, tonight's show, I think we can start doing that. So, uh, Absolutely. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. It's like I was saying before the show, you know, it might seem as if this is very specific and related to people who are targeted individuals. And I appreciate there'll be people out there that might be saying, well, how does this affect me? I'm one of the lucky ones that haven't got me on a list. And what people have to realize is that it may not be now, but these targeted individuals are basically the test stage. And it's the test stage for rolling all of this madness out to all 7 billion of us on this planet. That is honestly how I view this. So that's why I think this is of great importance. And of course, as the show goes on, we'll see how this connects into all the stuff we cover with Anthony Patch as well. But you've been working on something called the two hypothesis, Doc. Talk to us about that. Yeah, um, well, a couple of the TIs that have contacted me recommended that I uh, look at the uh, YouTube videos uh, put out by Brian Tew, T-E-W, who is a former DOD contractor who uh, also a, a uh, trained as a lawyer um, and uh, apparently also a targeted individual who has done an enormous amount of research, uh, reading books by people like Dr. Robert Duncan, uh, XCI mind hacker of the mind hacking strategy group who wrote uh, uh, several books. Uh, the one I've got in front of me is called Project Soul Catcher, Volume 2, Secrets of Cyber and Cybernetic Warfare Revealed. Well, you know, uh, uh, Brian has studied this and many, many other uh, books and uh, materials from the scientists that have put together this uh, uh, this program over, you know, the past 70 some years. And uh, so I, the reason I call this the, well, what I've done uh, to Kev is I've, I've, uh, I've linked uh, to this uh, particular YouTube on my gangstalkingmindcontrolcults.com website. Uh, if you go to that gangstalkingmindcontrolcults.com, cults.com website and in the upper left corner uh, click on gang stalking the first article that will come up is former DOD contractor Brian Tu discusses conscious computers and mind control colon the two hypothesis so what I've done is I've, I've got the YouTube there people can watch it it's three and a half hours long but it, it basically lays out a whole scenario of how this thing works and on the scientific level and then what I've done is I've transcribed the interview uh, myself, and then I've extracted, I think, about 27 main elements of this, uh, what I call the two hypothesis. So, like any hypothesis, now we can say, okay, let's test this thing, see if it uh, it holds up to scrutiny, and and if it uh, is true to reality, and if if it does, then it might just have great explanatory power that can help TIs now and in the future. Um, so if you don't mind, Kev and Tony and Johnny, I'll, I'll start down through these main elements of the two scenario, and we can just uh, stop and talk about these things as we go, um, see how far we get. Um, 
I think that there's going to be an overlap between this uh, information. And again, this is Brian Tu's information. So, uh, and again, he's, he's quoting the top scientists in the field. Now, before I jump into this, I will say that in the year 2012, uh, in the context of writing a series of articles uh, that's on my 9-11 uh, nwo.com website. This series of articles is called Is Creston Baca, Colorado, the Vatican City of the New World Order, an expose of the New World Religion. Okay, that's that's all on my 911nwo.com website, uh, from which this website, Gangstalking Mind Control Cults. Dot com springs. And uh, in the context of that, I spent an entire year, 2012, writing part six, which is Mind Control, History, and Applications. Now, I printed this out. It's about 68 pages long, single space, and it's got 46 book references. So I spent the whole year researching mind control, its history, and its applications. And uh, so actually, it turns out I'm rather well-versed in the gang stalking uh, history because this is all coming out of this mind control uh, history. So the first premise here of what I call the two scenario is that modern gang stalking is a global system of neuro warfare, cognitive warfare. It is the modern continuation of the CIA's MK Ultra slash monarch trauma based mind control programming. Uh, while there were hundreds of programs in the CIA's MK Ultra uh, program back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, uh, which were exposed in the 1970s uh, church senate hearings uh, hearings. Today, there are many, many more programs and projects. And then I link to this article, Mind Control History and Applications. Sex, second premise, and this is from Brian Tu's lecture. The four primary agencies carrying out global gang stalking mind control operations are the CIA and DIA, uh, of course, uh, DI's Defense Intelligence Agency, which hire the neuroscience hive mind teams as subcontractors, the Department of Defense, which supplies the money through their black budget projects, and the NSA, which provides the top scientists. Hive mind teams, according to two, and he's got a number of good YouTubes on this, communicate via synthetic telepathy. So, you know, we're getting into real high tech stuff. The government's probably 60 or 80 years ahead of the uh, the rest of the population technologically in in, in so many ways. And, of course, that allows uh, these things to go on. Uh, People really can't imagine what's going on because they have no uh, knowledge of it. Third one is a large pool of people are needed as targeted individuals and mind control victims uh, for this kind of research. Therefore, uh, two, Brian, two suggests there are tens of millions of targeted individuals in America and tens of millions more around the world. Um, according to two, and of course, I've been trying to estimate these numbers for a long time and I'd come up with millions, but he says tens of millions. Individuals are placed into this program because they fall into one of four categories, according to two judicial targets, criminals. Two, uh, extrajudicial targets. This would include uh, all kinds of people, activists, whistleblowers, dissidents, etc. Targets of opportunity, and this could be just about anybody, certainly including uh, uh, MK Ultra victims who had been uh, uh, a test subject for the CIA, you know, going back to the early years of their lives. And lucrative targets, or people that are, uh, for some reason, uh, uh, involved with something that is profitable and, and or maybe they've got some very rich enemies or something. And Doc, uh, jump in yeah. there because you mentioned tens of millions and, you know, if yeah. we're looking at a program that is eventually to be rolled out worldwide to every human, then the larger the test kind of group, the better the results you'll get, i.e. how you can manipulate large numbers of people at once. The larger that test kind of population is, I imagine, the better they're able to model how their different techniques and tactics work. Right on, right on. Number four, I think, is going to get into a a topic that's going to overlap with Tony's work uh, and yours, Kev. Targets mind control victims have their minds linked up for life with conscious supercomputers, which send a steady stream of bi-directional, low-frequency electromagnetic radiation to the target's brain. This stream of energy includes a special carrier frequency that interacts with the specific brainwave patterns of the TIs. 
The brain of the victim is illuminated with a stream of energy, photons, known as the information and injection feedback loop, otherwise known as the neural link. Of course, neural means brain. Uh, then they read the return training signal. The system builds a cognitive model of the victim's brain. It is all automated. Most of the torture and murder that is committed by the conscious computers uh, is committed by the conscious computers, which have, according to two, a will, intellect, and emotion uh, and emotions of their own. Now, the will, intellect, and emotions, also known as the soul, these three comprise the soul, according to this research, of the supercomputers were stolen, now this is pretty wild here, from the tens of millions of Americans whose will, intellect, and emotions have already been digitized, destroyed, and downloaded into these supercomputers. Now, this is really scary stuff. Tens of millions of Americans are now targeted, he says. The supercomputers are in the process of building copycat parallel twin personalities of the souls of the TIs slash mind control victims by reverse engineering the will, intellect, and emotions of the TIs in order to achieve direct behavioral control over them. Oh, so oh. the end product then is is direct behavioral control. You uh, turn you turn the subject into a into a zombie slave. You've now you know, you, yeah. There's, there's one piece in there I've, I've picked up on, and I'll bring in Dr. Patch at this stage. Anthony, I'll bring you in because as we're reading that there and we're talking about conscious computers and targeting people's brains, the one mm -hmm. thing that jumped out at me was when the doc read out, the brain is the victim or the brain of the victim is illuminated with a stream of energy, photons, known as the information and injection feedback loop otherwise known as the neural link. Now, we talk about how they try to manipulate our basic quantum bits in our brain by changing the spin. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't photons one way, Tony, that you could alter the spin of your microtubulins? Yes, indeed. And the short answer is it comes down to electromagnetism and you change the spin of quantum particles up, down, spin, and also spin neutral and half spin quantum particles electromagnetically. And you can do that by uh, transmitting photons just because photons are light. You can do that through that part of the electromagnetic spectrum. So literally, magnetically, photons can change the spin of the tubulin dimers, which are binary pairs of zero and one. And as you change the spin, you change the information. You change the zero to a one, you change the one to a zero, and that's the basic starting point, the building block of that discussion. You're literally yeah. changing the ones and zeros of information. Thus, that changes the thought process and the memories, and you control. Wow, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, I think you're gonna find other elements here that you can relate to, Tony, uh, in terms of how the process works. But yeah, we're getting a sense now. There's this uh, continuous link up between the super conscious, so conscious supercomputers, which by the way, Dr. Robert Duncan says are in these deep underground bases in America. Um, and because uh, I was wondering where they were and I was looking at Project Soulcatcher and that's what Dr. Robert Duncan says, uh, whether it's true or not, I don't know. But anyway, there's this steady stream of uh, mag uh, electromagnetic energy between the conscious uh, computers and the TI's brain. So uh, uh, that's, you know, mind boggling in itself. But let's continue here. Uh, the number five, the stream of electromagnetic energy is relayed from the conscious computer, supercomputer, to the minds of the victims via satellite, cell towers, and mobile platforms. And the mobile platforms can be a truck and a car and a ship and a suitcase and, you know, just could be a... Um, Anything that is a relay uh, relays these signals. Uh, number six, the brains of the targets are digitized. Okay, there's the zeros and the ones. Using nanotechnology and implants in the body and blood sugar. The nanotechnology adheres to the neurotransmitters of the brain. The hidden carrier frequency that piggybacks on the continuous stream of electromagnetic energy interfaces with the nanotechnology in the target's brain. And the two different, there are two different interface technologies that are used, and one is brain-to-computer interface and transcranial 
brain stimulation. Um, these uh, this will become kind of clear as we move on down what the transcranial brain stimulation is. Uh, did you want to stop and <laughs> and uh, say something there? Yeah, just one part there, and I'll get Tony or John to jump in here. But when we're reading number six there, and it's talking about nanotechnology and the brain and the blood, and I mean. Uh, is anyone getting kind of an echo of Elon Musk and his neural lace technology here? Yeah, and we're also talking about uh, what we've mentioned many times are the nanoparticles uh, that are already within our system and remaining dormant at this point. Targeted individuals are not dormant, of course, with their nanoparticles, the nanomachines, the nanotransmitters and receivers. So um, what I'm getting out of this, Dr. Kallstrom, is the absolute factual statement of this technology. This is not, you know, out in the woo land. You're talking about a gentleman with firsthand knowledge of this technology existing today and operating today and responsible for many of the outward things that we see going on in terms of crimes that are occurring. Yeah, and just one more comment about the nanotechnology supposedly this is now in everybody's body because it's probably coming from the chemtrail spraying i mean the yes, nanotech absolutely. has been sprayed on us for the last quarter century so you know Correct. every every human and non-human creature is going to have these things in their system uh, which then can be uh, uh used so it's really the nanotechnology plus the uh electromagnetic energy from the supercomputer well don't it together before, yeah before you move on johnny you've got something to add in here I was just thinking that the the way this super computer, this conscious computer, is sending out streams, uh, there's no really any way of escaping this because, I mean, it's we're talking satellites, we're talking uh, cell phone towers. There's there's no way of actually escaping from the 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 data that's getting sent to you. No, that's exactly it, Johnny. You've hit the nail on the head there. And that's why, Doc, I think that these people who are targeted right now, it's just a test for when this goes live, real time, everyone. Yeah. Well, yeah, Johnny, we have a, uh, or Brian, too, mentioned some uh, some defense tactics, and we'll get to those here. Uh, but, yeah, that that's coming at us, or, or it's coming to the TIs 24-7. Uh, number seven, through trans cranial brain stimulation that's brain to brain contact leaders of what uh, Brian two and others are calling the hive mind teams and the leaders are the quote unquote clones inject impulses memory attacks verbal entrainment visual entrainment two dimensional images short videos dream modulation neuro linguistic programming thoughts images holograms etc into the minds of the victims Victims are typically subject to hundreds of neuro attacks each day, and uh, targets of this technology near oh yeah okay targets of this technology nearly universally experience the symptoms of tinnitus or ringing in the ears, and or fossing, which is kind of a light show that's uh, uh, provided to the TI because the, their optical nerve is being disrupted by this stream of electromagnetic energy. And I should mention that the clones of the hive mind teams, the hive mind teams are three to six people. Again, these are CIA, DIA subcontractors, usually involving psychologists, psychiatrists, uh, cognitive researchers, neuroscientists. Um, and these are the guys who are going to be going to neuroscience uh, conferences around the world, and when you have a big neuroscience conference, there's thirty or forty thousand people that show up. These are the people that are making money doing these horrific experiments on non-consenting citizens around the world. These people, are, according to two, are, are, are psychopaths or sociopaths. Uh, he calls them intellectual barbarians. But we know that you know, if we go back to the MK Ultra, we know that uh, the same dynamic occurred with the horrendous experiments of MK Ultra. We had some of the top psychiatrists and psychologists in the world uh, doing this kind of uh, trauma-based mind control, satanic ritual abuse on uh, infants, on all kinds of people, uh, starting in 1953 with the beginning of the MK Ultra program. And uh, so that uh, one psychologist, Dr. Colin Ross, says the entire field of psychiatry and all of academe is implicated in the crimes that were committed 
uh, by in the MK Ultra and related programs. Okay, so uh, moving next, uh, number eight, the supercomputers. Well, Doc, yeah. let me stop you there before the yeah, music sure. rudely interrupts you. We're almost sure. at the break. Oh, I always say this show goes fast, and when you've got two guests, it goes doubly fast. I hope you're all catching this information out there. I'm going to drop the link to this article in the chat room and on the show notes because I think it's imperative that we all learn this information. Like Johnny Whistles said there, he hit the nail on the head. Cell towers, electromagnetic energy, satellites. I think that includes all of us within their target population. This is the Camp Baker Show. We are back and you're tuned in live to the Kev Baker Show right here on tfrlive.com. Tonight I've got Johnny Whistles with me and we've got not one but two guests. We've got Dr. Eric Karlstrom who is continuing his absolutely brilliant series on the research he's done into mind control and more specifically gang stalking or as I like to call it the MK Ultra in the 21st century and to add to the conversation, we've got our good friend, the newest member of the KBS team. He's got his own show on a Friday night, author of numerous books, Mr. Anthony Patch. And before I go back to the doc, Tony, I want to come to you because that segment there where we were talking about the satellites, the cell towers, the mobile platforms, we talk a lot about the rollout of 5G. Now, they try and sell that to the public through saying that with the Internet of Things, there's going to be so many gadgets looking for bandwidth, looking for a connection to the Internet, and 5G it is the thing we need. When I listen to Doc Karlstrom, I'm thinking all these extra connections that it's going to be making. I don't think it's the Internet of Things, Tony. I think it's connecting all of us to the beast system. Yeah, it really is, and I'm glad that uh, Dr. Karlstrom brought up the computer to brain interface. And I want to just shed just a little bit of information about that. We have talked about D-Wave. We've talked about the model numbers of D-Wave. The most current one is the fifth model, which has 2048, 2048, 2048 qubits. It's been marketed and sold as having 2000 qubits, calling it the 2000 Q. Now that's all public and we've talked about that. The 2048, that is the number of qubits in the D-Wave computer. That is also the quaternary amplitude modulation, or QAM, of 5G Wi-Fi. So the qubits have a direct correlation in number to the actual amplitude modulation of the 5G signal that is being broadcast. Therein lies your transmission medium between computer and brain to complete the interface. And, of course, the qubits, they've been modeled on what? Oh, our brains. I see how it works now. And let's bring Dr. Eric Karlstrom back into this. And you can find the doc's work over at gangstalkingmindcontrolcults.com or 911nwo.com. Doc, here we go again. And we've just mentioned 5G there. And that definitely ties into everything you're talking about, everything Anthony's talking about. And we're starting to see how this all fits together. Yeah, that's great because I'm I'm uh, not up to speed on 5G or D-Wave computers, so this is good learning experience for me too. Let me just uh, before we go into number eight, I have a, a kind of an epigraph quote at the beginning of my mind control history and applications article from Alex Constantine, Psychic Dictatorship in the USA, 1995. He brings it back to 1953 when Alan Dulles of the CIA. Uh, signed the MK Ultra project into being. He says, in 1953, CIA Director Alan Dulles, speaking before a national meeting of Princeton alumni, distinguished two fronts in the then-current battle for men's minds, quote-unquote, a first front of mass indoctrination through censorship and propaganda, and a second front of individual, quote, brainwashing and, quote, brain-changing. Before an audience of fellow Ivy Leaguers, 
Dulles skipped the usual pieties about democracy. The same year, Dulles approved the CIA's notorious MKUltra project and exempted it from normal CIA financial controls. And then at the... Uh, uh, at the top of this article, I've got a bunch of quotes from Dr. Robert Duncan, ex-CIA scientist and mine hacker, who says some very interesting things, talks about the uh, Satan program, silent assassination through adaptive networks, etc. And uh, he says the number of su successful kills through mind hacking cannot be estimated due to the extremely large collateral damage numbers. Well, you know, so this stuff is ongoing. Uh, it's up to it's up to us to is to figure out what's happening and how to defend ourselves. Okay, number eight, the supercomputer is constantly predicting your choices in advance based on your past choices. This is called choice reference pattern. And the actual feet on the street, the gang stalkers, the perps, are used to verify the predictions that the technology the supercomputer makes, uh, according to two. Number nine, the goal is to make a cognitive model or map of the victim's brain. Ultimately, the system replicates and digitizes the will, intellect, and emotions, the soul of the targets, and downloads this back into the conscious computer. We more or less said that. Number 10, gang stalking street theater is also used to create a continuously hostile environment for the victims. They harass, attack, and target the victim in order to constantly provoke the victim into emotional responses that can be remotely measured and integrated back into the supercomputer's data. The continually hostile environment created everywhere the TI goes forces the TI, targeted individual, into isolation and results in the target's inability to function in society. He, she shuts down physically and psychologically. Uh, number 11, physical and psychological trauma are used to map out the sensory and neural pathways of the brain and the central nervous system. These are kind of two different things. Long-term physical and brutal psychological trauma, this is now trauma-based mind control, also called satanic ritual abuse, is necessary in order to force the victim to dissociate from reality as well as map the brain by breaking the brain down to the synaptic level. The millions of neurons in the brain communicate with each other through a synaptic gap. The nanotechnology that we all ingest from chemtrail spraying, etc., adheres to the neurotransmitters. This is how the technology is able to speak to and decode thoughts. Any thoughts on that? Wow, Tony, your thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, you've just tied together the nanoparticles, the quantum computers, and we're being specific about D-Wave. Don't I hope the audience doesn't get sidetracked by transistor-based supercomputers. Those are the Model Ts. We're focused on quantum computing here because our brains operate as quantum computers. And we've shared this whole thing about psychological operations that um, they are teaching. The deep mind learning is a process of developing algorithms that are based upon our patterns, and this is just what Tu is talking about in his paper here, we have talked about how they teach the machines by observing us, developing algorithms from those observations, and then they are able to predict our future act actions based upon those patterns that are embedded in algorithms. This becomes the discussion we've had about recursive neural network programming. This is the Boltzmann machine. This is the recursive, meaning an endless loop of assessing, taking in, finding the errors, correcting the errors, and self-learning of the AI system. And this is going on constantly with these quantum computers. So they are processing information the same way we do with our brains. It is all pattern recognition and then into predictive um, behavior so that they can control people by predicting their patterns uh, of behavior based on history, real time, and then into the near future. So what we're describing here is not only are they controlling people, not only is this about targeted individuals and mind control and manipulation, but it's a feedback loop from those targeted individuals that then teach the AI system in this recursive neural network process to become better at targeting and ultimately controlling. And the control, as I said, comes from predicting the future behavior of humans. Go ahead. Absolutely. And you know, Doc, we've had confirmation of this in the mainstream, albeit veiled because Amazon, who are one of the customers of the D-Wave quantum computer, 
they released a story and for me it was just almost them giving away what they could do because they were saying they'll be able to predict what you're going to buy ahead of time and have it ready to ship before you even click the button. <laughs> and this is all the predictive algorithms because they've been watching our behavior so long. Yeah, there had to be a profit motive in there somewhere, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, number 12. Organized stocking is based, again, on choice reference patterns. The technology uses the pattern of the target's previous choices to predict their next choices, as you just said, Tony. Based on previous choices, organized stockers are pre-placed at the locations where the TI is likely to go. The TIs will relate to this. They engage in, uh, these are the, the stockers now, will engage in situational scenarios and conversational scenarios, often termed street theater, psi acts, psi attacks, uh, scripts, etc. The purpose of these psi attacks is to capture the TI's attention. Each time they capture the victim's attention, a synaptic response is produced that can be remotely measured and integrated back into the RNM, and RNM stands for Remote Neural Monitoring and Remote Neural Manipulation, data of the computer. The stalking scripts, street theater, etc., are used to gauge whether the technology is working effectively or not. Okay, so this street, the, the stalking then, you know, which, again, they, they create a continually hostile environment that, you know, kind of makes the TI shutdown. But it has a number of purposes. And according to Brian, too, these stalkers are often police, uh, ex-police or ex-military people that are getting paid under the table. And there must be a lot of them. Remember in, in the year, well, you might not remember, but in the year 2003, the Boston Globe uh, put out a story saying the Department of Homeland Security, which is behind a lot of this, um, or is instrumental in this interagency project, uh, would like to have 100 million Americans as citizen spies. So we've talked before about citizen civil military operations. This is a civil military interagency operation involving PSYOP with these stalkers, involving uh, electronic, neuro, uh, psychotronic uh, uh, directed energy weapons with the supercomputer. So we, we've 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 worked up to this, Kev, and now we're getting down to the nitty gritty. I think Kev's uh, or not Kev, but uh, Brian Tu's hypothesis is is definitely worth uh, uh, studying. Okay, number thirteen. The purpose of the organized stalkers then is to surveil the victim, keep the victim from defeating the technology, discredit the victim. As Brian Tu says, try going to your local policeman and telling him that uh, hundreds of strangers are following you. <laughs> you know he's going to think you're crazy, and of course that's part of the uh, that's that's the point. Uh, and also to harass and provoke the victim into emotional responses again that can produce an electromagnetic emission from the brain. All the victims' or responses are mapped and recorded by the system, uh, so that they you know they can do a, uh, a predictive model, and this allows the computer to construct a cognitive model. Organized stalkers, again, often have police and military backgrounds and are paid cash under the table. They carry many changes of clothes in their vehicles in order to be able to fit in with whatever environment the victim chooses to visit. So if the victim goes to the pool, these guys can bring their bathing suit and jump in the pool and continue. Uh, these uh, stalkers communicate via cell phones. They surround and harass the target using strategies such as the floating box or picket surveillance and leapfrogging. Brian, too, explains this in some of his uh, other shorter uh, videos. Um, now this is an interesting point, number 15. 97 to 98% of the millions of people who are now being targeted have no idea they're being targeted. So can you imagine their life's gone to hell and they don't know what's going on? So that's one of the reasons I think it's so important for us to to do these kinds of series uh, to help educate these people because they, their lives really are are are, are rapidly uh, falling apart. The program is now building a profile on all of the people, according to two, with an online Facebook or other social media account. So the people are just putting their information up there. Right now, these people are not yet actively targeted, but the profile that they that they have. Uh, participated in constructing of their patterns and behavior will allow future active targeting. This is uh, from one of two's other short YouTubes. Okay, now we get to, uh, two, two really has thought this through. He says, all mind control is based on, one, censorship, restricting the victim's choices of behavior to prevent the victim from engaging in external activities that interfere with the neural programming in order to, in other words, drive them into isolation. They, they're just 
going to roll down their windows. They're afraid to come outside because of this continually hostile environment. Nobody can survive and nothing can survive in a continually hostile environment. And yep. yet that's... That is what's trying. That, that's what they're trying to create. Yeah, this next one you're about to go on to. I really want the audience to listen to this closely, and bear in mind the topic of Mandela effects. On you go, Doc. What's the next one in the list here? Yeah, we're on number sixteen. B is uh, all mind controls based on control of memory or men- memory management. So what they try to do is by is block the real memories and inject falsified and fabricated memories. With their supercomputer technology. Well, <laughs> let me bring Tony and Johnny in here. Have we not been saying all along that the Mandela effect is a psyop? And when it comes to gang stalking and this kind of stuff, psyops are a big part of this. Here we have somebody who's lived it, breathed it, analyzed it, and even wrote a hypothesis on it. And Tony, I'll come to you first. We're talking about controlling our memory. Sounds very much like the Mandela effect. Yeah, it really is. Remember, in our last discussion of this just a couple of days ago, we were saying that the progression will be that with the movie, The Mandela Effect, coming out, it's hitting a tipping point. It'll go mainstream. People will question their memories or recollection of, you know, things that existed. And they will then get to the point where they will not even remember their previous memories. That history is gone. It's been blocked, if you want to call it erasing it. But here, Q is saying by blocking real memories and injecting falsified and fabricated memories, that's the next step in the evolution of the process in which they don't remember the past, and now they're going to be given a new future history is the way I'd like to say it. Your new future history is going to be literally injected into your mind and already is with the beta testing with these millions of targeted individuals. And this will be, as you said, Kevin, a worldwide phenomenon of not just the Mandela effect, but to a higher degree of mind control, literal immersion in the hive mentality. And Doc, I want to give you the time to be able to talk about solutions. We got about 10 minutes. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, just to respond to what you just said, uh, George Orwell said in 1984, who controls the past controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past. So, <laughs> we're, And, of course, he also said if both the past and the external world exist only in the mind, and if the mind itself is controllable, what then? Bingo. You're done. <laughs> okay, number, number three or C is uh, all of this memory manipulation is ultimately – uh, dedicated to the direct behavioral control of the victim. Um, and again, this goes right back to the initial documents of MK Ultra. You can look them up. You can look at my article. The initial documents say we want to figure out how to get other people to do our bidding, how to get people to do what we want them to do despite their self-interest or even their urge for self-preservation. In other words, to turn into a mind-controlled slave. Okay, now we get into some so- uh, solutions. According to two, there are many ways to defeat this technology, and I really like these. First and perhaps foremost, he's, uh, he makes the point, if the target does not respond to the situational and conversational scenarios, in other words, if you start to, f- it takes a while, but if you start to figure out these setups are setups, you're now in a world of lies, spies, and setups. And I've experienced this, so I know exactly what he's talking about. Uh, but if you if you do not respond to these setups, the technology fails because it cannot be verified and they have to start over again. So you get smarter, hopefully. Do not succumb. Uh, get smarter. Watch them. Study them. Study the process. And I think you and we will prevail. He also talks about four kinds of shielding. Passive shielding, mental shielding, chemical shielding, and electro electronic jamming of these he says mental shielding is by far the best and here's what you can do to mess up their system you know you have to you have to accept if this hypothesis is correct there's this steady stream of electromagnetic energy targeting your brain there is this jerk on the other side in some university who is the the clone and his hive mind team who is trying to directly communicate to you through your brain-to-brain interface or transcranial interface uh, so accept that. That's that's the bad, bad, bad news. Now, what can you do to to thwart this? T- multitask. Uh, think in multiple threads. Uh, whistle while you walk. Uh, 
uh, etc. You know that he says then they cannot see a coherent pattern on the screen. Again, they have to go back to square one. The best of all the techniques for him is listening to pleasing music or dancing. This disrupts their access to the TI's brain. Uh, if you get an external signal which is more powerful than theirs, your brain will entrain onto that signal. They're trying to entrain you onto their signal. So listening to pleasing music is the best technique by far for him. And I must, at, at this point, Kev, be, be uh, uh, vulgar enough to say one of my websites is, features my own music, which I think is pleasing. It's ericcarlstrom.com. And I think this has perhaps protected me because I play banjo and guitar and piano a lot. And obviously, uh, it, my brain is entrained onto these tunes when I do that, thwarting their system. Another technique is be spontaneous. Uh, don't do something that's predictable. If they can think, okay, he's going to the bank because he needs money, they'll have people at the bank and they'll verify, blah, 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 blah. Well, what if you're driving to the bank and you stop off to get some bananas spontaneously at the split second, speed of light decision? They have nothing. They can't work with that. So uh, uh, when they're injecting their thought-triggered attacks, uh, these must be verified in order for them to uh, to go into the system. So... Uh, uh, be unpredictable. Don't follow the same schedule every day. Another good one, um, redirection. When you realize that you are under neural attack. So we have two different kinds of attacks. We have attacks from the stalkers in the street, the psi-acts, the psi-attacks. Uh, but then we have the neural attacks coming into your brain 24-7. Uh, uh, when you get to the point where you can recognize this, redirect your thoughts to something that makes you very, very happy. And he gives the example, he thinks of Jesus. He's a Christian. He says, if you don't have Jesus, you got a bigger problem than mind control, you know. Um, so uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, and this is why the last of these uh, uh, statements here is that the doctrines of Christianity actually do afford some protection from this system. Well, let me um, just jump in here because we've been talking, and again, it's all fitting together, the quantum connections. Tony, you've been talking recently about the holy firewall. Maybe you could just quickly throw that out there again, and I think the doc's going to love this. Yeah, if you accept uh, Jesus Christ as your Savior and you go through the process of actually becoming and dwelt with the Holy Spirit, and that Holy Spirit then um, affords you the literal full armor of God, and we've applied the concept of the full armor of God to the protection of your mind and your DNA. It is an actual shielding process. It even goes so far as to say that it modifies your DNA when you are indwelt with the Holy Spirit. So you're talking about a direct energy shield is one way to put it. It is not just theological. We are not just talking about you know, the Pope or any of that other stuff. We're talking about a personal relationship between you and Jesus Christ with no one in between and an actual turning to the Lord and accepting him as your Savior. But it's more than that, and I don't have time for that, but it is a valid exception of the Holy Spirit into your body, and that is the best defense that I can offer to you as a Christian believer. Yeah, Tony, and I, I totally agree, and, and so do so many of the TIs. Now, if you listen to this three-and-a-half-hour interview, uh, Brian, too, is being questioned by a lot of different TIs who are desperate for information and help, and most of them, it seems, are Christians, and most of them would totally agree with you that the Holy Spirit is their greatest shield. So, yeah, this is this is the hope. Uh, this is the silver lining in this. A uh, whole process, I think. Well, real, so. real quick, one last addendum, and I'll leave you with the rest of the floor, and that is that when you have this constant communication with Jesus Christ, that is quantum entanglement with Jesus Christ, and that is literally a phenomenon in quantum mechanics. The idea is that that is an unbreakable, encrypted form of communication. This is why D-Wave's computers were initially built, was to crack all forms of RSA encryption. They have done that. That's why they were funded by DARPA. The whole idea with Jesus Christ and that communication utilizing the Holy Spirit, not only as your shield, but it is an unbreakable line of communication between you and him. And what they are trying to do with this technology is to get as close to you as, you, as they can, because they cannot actually break that encoded communication between you and Christ. They can't break it. It's prohibited. But what they do is take your behavior 
as an outcome of your prayers and communications, and then determine by inferring from your patterns of behavior the information that you just received from Jesus Christ. And I can attest to that as a example of that in all the things that Kevin and I and Johnny engage in in our conversations. Um, You've got a couple of minutes left. Bill. <laughs> okay. Another, another solution. He says it really helps to have a basic understanding of how this technology works. Hence, hence, this is why he's giving these interviews. This is why I'm posting it and transcribing this, trying to make sense out of it. He says, if, if you understand that they're going to use trauma to target you on a daily basis, uh, trauma is essential for them to map out your system. So now, you know, with these tools, you can uh, foil, thwart, uh, defeat their technology and put it off, uh, put off uh, their enslavement of you because that's what they want to do. Um, they need to have you respond to their specific stimuli. Not any stimuli will do. It's got to be their stimuli and that's and then they have to have that verified. So without verification to their stimuli, there can be no mind control. So with these tools, um, I think TIs can begin maybe to turn the tide and uh, we'll study them now for a while and uh, learn how to defeat them. Uh, also, another point is learn to read active memory, which is really short-term memory. All of this targets short-term memory, anything less than 30 seconds. And so the, the targeting is designed to target your short-term memory, and it's based on attacking you as you formulate your thoughts. So these are thought-triggered attacks. And you begin to maintain situational awareness of your thoughts, your surroundings, your mind, etc. And you can tell then what's your own thought. You can begin to tell what's your own thought from one of these thought injections. Um, and uh, then you can um, then you can work with you know you can recognize it and just just uh, uh, expel that uh, thought. And that's why uh, it's so important, I think, that we're doing these shows and we're almost out of time, Doc. If you could let people know quickly your websites and we'll get you back on again to continue this next month. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the website uh, in question here is thegangstalkingmindcontrolcults.com. We're talking now about this recent uh, post that I have, uh, which which features a three and a half interview of Brian Two. And, and I'm calling the Two Hypothesis which is he's done a lot of studying of the scientists who put together this program over the 